This is the day that God has made. We gather in worship to give thanks for the blessings of life, to immerse ourselves in the sacredness of life, to reconnect with others who share this spiritual journey with us, to speak to seek spiritual nurture and guidance, and to recommit ourselves to being the church, the body of Christ in the world. Welcome to all who join with us today, no matter where you are, for our community stretches wide through the wonders of the World Wide Web, connecting us spiritually, even though we are physically distant. I'm Rev. Keith Hagerman, and this service is coming to you from Wesley United Church in downtown Cambridge, Ontario. We are located in Market Square of Historic Galt. I want to thank others participating in the worship today, our musicians and readers, and the production crew. We are now in the liturgical season uh, after Pentecost. One of the scriptures from the season of Easter is the story of the road to Emmaus. How, following the death of Jesus, some of his followers were walking between Jerusalem and Emmaus when a stranger joined them. At the end of the story, we learn that the stranger was the risen Christ, but they did not recognize him until he stayed with them and broke bread with them. These are people who had spent a significant amount of time with Jesus over several months, traveling with him, learning from him, and being his family. How is it that Jesus' best friends could not recognize him? Well, you and I are now in 16 months into this pandemic, where we have spent months in lockdown together with a small group of people. And if COVID has taught us anything, it's how to be with the same people for a long time and all the things that we learn about them when we are stuck together. Can you imagine not recognizing one of these people that you are closest to? To go back to the story of the road to Emmaus, perhaps what we are encountering is friends of Jesus who didn't believe that he could be arisen. They couldn't take the leap of faith to actually look at him and see him for who he was. Today is annual meeting Sunday here at Wesley, which will be held this afternoon over Zoom. And in that meeting, we will look back over the past year at what has happened. And if we look with the eyes of faith, perhaps we will see the marvelous workings of God, even in this very unusual time of pandemic a time when we thought the church was just in a holding pattern. And then if we look with the eyes of faith to the new year, we may detect new areas that God is calling us into. As we gather for worship, we pray that we may see with the eyes of faith the mysterious workings of God in our time. Hear these comforting words from Second Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 to 9, and I'm going to be reading from the paraphrase, the message. That's why we live with such good cheer. You won't see us drooping our heads or dragging our feet. Cramped conditions here don't get us down. They only remind us of the spacious living conditions ahead. It's what we trust in but don't yet see that keeps us going. Do you suppose a few ruts in the road or rocks in the path are going to stop us? When the time comes, we'll be plenty ready to exchange exile for homecoming. But neither exile nor homecoming is the main thing. Cheerfully pleasing God is the main thing, and that's what we aim to do regardless of our conditions. I invite you to join now with the musicians in the prayer song, Open My Eyes. Thank you. 
also with you. Good morning. In our first scripture reading today, we meet the prophet Samuel. For our purposes, we need to think of Samuel as the voice of God. <clears throat> God instructs Samuel to go down to the house of Jesse, and there God will show him whom he should anoint as the next king of Israel. Anointing is a sign that tells everyone that this person has been chosen by God. Listen, for there are some unanticipated twists and turns in this story. The reading is from 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 to 13. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king of over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one uh, whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? Jesse... Samuel said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, 
Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not <clears throat> see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance. But the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Aminadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Then Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he's keeping the sheep. <clears throat> and Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for he will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. This is, a, this is the good news. Thanks be to God. Could anything good come from this shepherd boy? A after all, we're talking about leading the, the people of Israel, the whole nation of people that is growing out of the 12 tribes of Israel. Jesse has seven strong sons that seem to be up to the task. But God says to the prophet Samuel, do not look on appearance or stature, for the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. And so when pressed to see if there are any other offspring other than these seven, Jesse mentioned, well, he did have one more son who was still a youth by the name of David who was out tending the sheep. And so Samuel sends for this boy. And when David arrives, the word of the Lord spoke to Samuel and said, this is the one. Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Unexpected surprises. The mysterious working of God. And David went on to become the king who was looked back on as the greatest king in the whole history of Israel. Generations later, people would say, can anything good come out of Nazareth? That backwater village that wasn't memorable in any way. It, it wasn't a commercial center. It wasn't a center of learning. It wasn't a center of industry or athletics or of military. Yet, from this tiny village came a descendant of that same King David, who would so affect life that the world would never be the same. Ah, the mysterious workings of God. And so we can ask, can anything good come out of a pandemic? On the surface, it seems unlikely. Businesses have had to shutter their doors, and many have gone under. Rental income has dried up. Social gatherings are no more. Unemployment and underemployment are at every turn. Savings accounts have taken a dive. Churches have been forced to close their doors to physical gatherings for the protection of all. And without regular in-person worship and the usual fundraisers, church finances are in dire straits. Could God possibly be working even in the midst of this? And on the top of all this, for Wesley, when the pandemic hit, we were in the midst of a giant capital expenditure with roof renovations. Yet we were already knee-deep in it, and there was no turning back. 
if we look with the eyes of faith, or if we look with the eyes of faith, can we see the hand of God working with us even in the midst of this? For those looking after our finances, they probably would say there wasn't a worst time to implement such things. Yet there was no turning back. There was no turning back because if we didn't do the repairs, our sanctuary could be condemned. The structural, the structure of our sanctuary could have collapsed and this would be no more. We, we needed to replace the roof, but before the roof could be replaced, we needed to do structural repairs. Some of the connections between beams were no longer solid. They, they had pulled apart or they had loosened up and gaps had appeared. We needed to solidify those connections and make sure that everything was solid. And so in our attic, new brackets were added and new hardware through those beams. And then in our sanctuary, tension rods were installed, holding the walls together so that the roof wouldn't push out on them and push them apart. We have been reconnecting. We have been remembering to member again, to fasten together those members connecting one part to another. But we can look deeper at these things as a model for our spiritual community and think about that reconnecting and how it's become a model for who we are. Reconnecting with all members of the congregation and so there have been intentional phone calls and emails that you have been making. An intentional reaching out to those who do not have an internet connection and who are new, not able to access our Sunday worship services. And there has been intentional reaching out to those who live alone. And intentional reaching out to those who are grieving that we can't gather in the way we normally would and embrace them and stand beside them. And there's reaching out in support for those who are living with added stresses in their lives. And there's been delivering groceries and medications. And we have become intentional about reconnecting so that all parts of the body of the church are reconnected just as we have been reconnecting the beams in our attic. In this way, the body of the church the community becomes stronger as we support one another. But then there are not only the connections that reach in, but also the connections that reach out. Our relationship with Ancora and Saginaw houses, our African link connections, our connections with the drug relapse prevention program, our connection with the other church community that meets in our building, and the list goes on. We know that to be the church in effective ways, we must preserve and grow these connections because the church isn't just about looking inward, but looking out into the world and reaching out to make sure that those connections are not only maintained, but that they are strong so that each part feels supported. And then there have been other parts that have been temporarily disconnected during this pandemic, and we are anxious to reconnect those links and to build them up again. Those who find community at the Saturday morning cafe each week at Wesley. Perhaps for, for some, this is their connection to church, their only connection with church, and maybe their only connection with community. And every week they came and they were part of that, and they joined together, and, and we feel the loss that they must be feeling. Without it, they are lost. And we know that we are less as a community and we need to reestablish those links. We look forward to reconnecting to make sure that all of these parts of the body are connected. In our attic area, some of the beams also needed shoring up. O over time, they had suffered fatigue they were no longer able to support the structure all by themselves. 
and so additional beams needed to be laminated onto them. There's a construction word for that that I love, that they sister two beams together. There is one beam, and they fasten another beside it to support it. Isn't that a wonderful image that they sister them together? I love the image because it talks about human support, one standing beside another to support one. And so we know when we are going through hard times, if we stand together, there is strength in that. And the Old Testament said two are stronger than one. And a three-stranded cord is hard to break. This is the image of, of covenant, of working together. Where the hymn says, sister, let me be your servant. Let me be as Christ to you. And so when we look at our church community, we know that some parts need some extra support. They, they, they need a sister to gather beside them for strength. I know that there are at least two committees that need a chairperson and other committees that are looking for some new energy and enthusiasm to carry us into the future. And perhaps you will be that support. What we began in our roof now needs to infiltrate who we are as a church community. Our church building is now structurally sound for years to come, although our financial commitments to pay for it still need to be met. And I know that you also are being invited to be part of that. Now we take this to the next stage, allowing what we have done to our building to affect who we are. As a church, we choose to be a model for others, building community that draws the circle wide and wider still, making bonds and, and connecting those bonds. This is about a leap of faith. Seeing with the eyes of faith who we are and who we may become. If we look closely, it's right before our eyes, as close as as our new renovations, where God is speaking to us, leading us into the future. Can we see it? Or are we so accustomed to thinking only in terms of traditional models of spirituality that we cannot see it? Have we been telling ourselves the story that we are in Good Friday or in Lent? or in Easter, or in Pentecost, where we know that the power of God to make a difference is already within us. What if we were to tell the story that we are on a new journey with Jesus, who we are now seeing in new ways? May it be so. Amen. As we follow in the way that God is leading, we know God's reign will surely come. As long as we follow in the way that God is leading, we know God's reign will surely come. We know this, we know this, yes, God's reign will surely come. We know this, we know this, yes, God's reign will surely come. As long as we hope there is a future for creation, a future for the universe. As long as we hope there is a future for creation, a future for the universe. We know this, we know this, yes, God's reign will surely come. We know this, we know this, yes, God's reign will surely come. As long as we pray, there is a future for creation, a future for the universe. As long as we pray, there is a future for creation, a future for the universe. We know this, we know this, yes, God's reign will surely come. Malembe, Malembe, Malembe toko tamolo. So, we have a new roof. 
Imagine if you were a bird and were able to see it from the air. All of those shingles lined up and shining, protecting our building from the elements, keeping out wind and rain and snow and sun and sleet and hail, protecting our building and providing shelter. This is a gift that we have to offer. Shelter from the storms of life. Imagine God as a mother eagle offering the shelter of her wings. May God's sheltering wings protect you. Or the scriptures would also say underneath are the everlasting arms. So protecting above and beneath, surrounding with protection. I've been thinking about shelter. And we have a physical shelter, but what about those who need shelter? And how our building can provide shelter for others, those who are lonely, those with addictions, those dealing with the challenges of parenting, those caring for aging parents, those looking to make a difference, those seeking relationship, those looking for, for a place to struggle with big questions, those who have lost their way, those who need to recover a sense of self and their own purpose. The church can be a place of shelter for all of these. And how about for those seeking a place to link their lives in marriage, where they are connected to the holy? Or those seeking a place to bring up their children in the faith? or those seeking answers to the deep questions of life and those seeking a place to ask those deep questions. A place of shelter. A place of shelter for those who love God a little and want to love a lot. A place of shelter for those who see a link between the sacred and the environment and the entire ecosphere. A place of shelter for those, for anyone that wants to belong no matter who they are, who's looking for a place to be treated with fairness and respect and dignity and kindness. Shelter, a place to find community, a place to belong, a place to live out spirituality, a place to connect to all that God loves, to people in many different situations to the earth, sea, and sky, to, to the cosmos connecting. This is a place of shelter where we can do those things. A place to see where we fit in, where we are part of the isness of life and where our lives make a difference to life. Shelter. Who are the others that need to find shelter in our church? Shelter from the storms of life place to renew their strength and vision and to gain a renewed fortitude, a place where there will be companions on the journey. Our mission, the invitation to us is to be a place to provide shelter. How will we do this? May God bless us. Amen. Our second reading this morning is from the Gospel of Mark. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. It is Mark chapter 4, verses 26 to 34. He also said, the Spirit of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain and the seed. <clears throat> but when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? 
It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is grown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the words to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. In our prayers, we open our hearts to the world around us, to the world that God loves. And our prayers become God praying in us and through us. And so we open our hearts to the needs of the world. And first of all, as we do that, we open our hearts to the world as we are led in music by Charmaine Bailey Futner. He's originally from Antigua, and as a retired jazz singer, Charmaine is presently the minister at Bedford United Church in Windsor, Ontario. And she will be singing God Weeps. And then we will move into a prayer time, a prayer for students of Kamloops Residential School, a prayer that comes from our moderator, the Right Reverend Richard Bott. God! God weeps at love withheld, at strength misused, at children's innocence abused, and till we change the way we love God. Let us pray. O oh God, we are grieving. O oh God, we are shocked. O oh God, we are horrified. But God, if we truly listened, we can't be surprised. The elders in the communities had already told the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, told the governments and the world, the stories of the children dead and buried, unnoted by the settler systems, but never ever forgotten by their siblings, their parents, their communities. 
We grieve for the indigenous children taken from their homes and parents by the government, handed over to the responsibility of the Christian Church, the children who died under its care, never to be held by their families, never to be returned to their communities. Not only the 215 children of the Tkemloops, Sowepmuk, and other indigenous communities along the west coast and interior, whose bodies have now been found on the grounds of the Kamloops Indian Residential School Grounds, but all those children whose bodies have not been found, who died in any of the Indian Residential Schools. We grieve for the survivors of the Indian Residential Schools the children who did come home but were changed by the experience, the children who grew up and have the trauma of remembering again what happened to them. Even as we give thanks for their families and communities who hold the stories of the children who have kept searching, who keep searching, we grieve that that search is even necessary. That even one child was taken, that even one child died, that even one child's death went unnoted by the system. Help us to stop, to sit in silence, to remember the names we do not know. May their spirits have peace and their bodies be brought home to their lands. And God, help us to take this grief, this shock, this horror, and turn it into right action, action that works for right relations, action that works for healing and justice and hope. And please don't let those of us who are settlers and descendants of settlers, newcomers to this land, let the horror, the shock, and the grief just be an outpouring of words, of tears, or ineffectual hand-wringing. Let this be a moment that changes, a moment that transforms the brokenness, that we might walk in right relations for the good of your children, for the good of your world. Please, God, these things we pray in the name of the one who brought creation into being, in the name of Jesus, our teacher and friend, in the name of the Holy Spirit, whose wings spread across the sky. Amen and Amen. Thank you for your continued support of Wesley, your gifts for the life of the lifeblood that makes ministry possible, and your gifts also continue to pay for our root structure that may provide support and connections in our lives. Coming up this afternoon is our annual meeting that will be held over Zoom. A link has been sent out, and we look forward to your participation. May the God of hope go with us every day, filling all our lives with love and joy and peace. May the God of justice speed us on our way, bringing light and hope to every land and race. Praying, let us work for peace, singing, share our joy with all. Treasure 
heard and pursued. May the God of love keep our commitment clear to a world restored to human life renewed. Praying, let us work for peace. Singing, share our joy with all. Working for a world that's new. Made full when we hear Christ call. blessing of earth and sky, of water and air, of earth. The blessing of roof structure and structural connections of community and relationships. The blessings of new vision and the, be the ability to see beyond what is to what can be. The blessings of the Spirit who is in each of us as individuals and who is in our community as we work together. May the Spirit be with us this day, guiding us into the future, that we may work for peace and justice, sharing joy and compassion, creating a world of nurture and belonging, that all may have fullness of life. May it be so. Amen. change the way we care God 